Hey folks, this is Riker with another Diablo lore video. In today's episode, we explore the Anjuris Council, the angels that rule over the high heavens, and their conflict in deciding whether to spare or kill humanity. This is part 6 in a series where we explore the major players in the world of Diablo. From the Nephilim to Tyriel to Deckard Cain to Diablo himself. And we give a crash course on what exactly is going on story-wise in this game series. Feel free to check out our previous episode if you haven't, and make sure you have subscription notifications turned on to be alerted of new episodes. In our previous episodes, we spoke about how angels finally discovered humanity, who were born from the interbreeding of renegade angels and demons, and how a council of angels voted to determine whether humanity should be saved or killed. So let's talk more about that Council, the Anjuris Council. This was the ruling body of the High Heavens consisting of five archangels. Each archangel embodied one of Anu's five virtues. Remember Anu, the first being in creation from which everything else was born? Well, his five virtues are wisdom, hope, valor, justice, and fate. I don't, I don't know how fate is a virtue. I mean, I, I get the others. I can imagine someone who is wise, someone who is valorous, hopeful. Someone with a strong sense of justice. But what is someone who embodies fate? Oh, my farm's crops have all withered from locusts. Guess it was just meant to be. So this council observes something of a democracy within itself, putting important matters to vote. And the Anjuris Council could be found within the Silver City which was the capital of the High Heavens. And amidst the city's numerous towers, one stands out in particular, the Silver Spire, which is basically the White House of the Silver City. We explore the Silver Spire in Diablo 3, and it's in the Silver Spire that we can find the Crystal Arch that we spoke about in our first episode, the place where angels are born. So let's talk about the members of the Anjuris Council, starting with its first leader, Malthiel. Now, a long time ago, Malthiel was the aspect of Wisdom. He was the oldest member of the Anjuris Council, so eh, it makes sense. Yo, young whippersnappers, you should appreciate the wisdom of your elders. Malthiel lived in a place in the Silver City called the Pools of Wisdom. And if you gaze into the pools themselves, you don't see a reflection, but rather a manifestation of all the emotions currently being experienced by all beings. Malthiel had a chalice called the Chaladar. Or, in English, the Chalice of Wisdom. And that chalice held liquid from the Pools of Wisdom. Malthiel would spend years at a time staring into this chalice in order to expand his wisdom. And staring into this chalice is said to be able to grant its user the ability to see things with flawless objectivity. To see how everything in the universe is connected. So it should be no surprise that Malthiel was the first to discover the World Stone in Pandemonium. And he was basically the only being in the universe to truly understand how important of an object it was. So when Lilith and Inarius stole the World Stone to create Sanctuary, Malthiel became obsessed with trying to find it. And since everyone was relying on Malthiel's wisdom to figure out where the World Stone had gone, Malthiel felt really bad about himself when he couldn't find it. And he started a gradual descent into something of an emo phase. You know, just sulking, being antisocial, listening to Lincoln Park. So after the High Heavens finally discovered Sanctuary and humanity and the World Stone again, and the Council voted on whether to kill all humans or spare them, Malthiel abstained from voting. <sighs> Whatever, I don't care. You know, apathy is the greatest quality you look for in a leader. On to Imperius, the Archangel of Valor. He was always the one leading the charge on the battlefield against the forces of Hell. In one such battle, Imperius ended up in a one-on-one -on -one battle with Diablo himself. They seemed evenly matched, so Diablo started to get into Imperius' head to try to gain an edge in the fight. He questioned whether Imperius' valor was really just a veneer for wrath, and how his fellow angels may react if they ever learned the truth. This just served to make Imperius angrier, as in more wrathful, Kind of proving Diablo's point. But then the other members of the Anjuris Council arrived on the scene, and together they managed to subdue Diablo. Now, as the other angels were discussing amongst themselves how capturing Diablo would be a huge victory, one that could possibly lead to the end of the eternal conflict between angels and demons, Diablo goaded Imperius into killing him. 
and the rage-filled Imperius was happy to oblige. So this turned into a victory for Diablo instead, since demons just respawn in hell when they die. And now, Diablo had sown the seeds of dissidence amongst the ranks of the Angerus Council. Imperius's weapon was Solarion, the Spear of Valor. He apparently forged this weapon in the heart of a dying star, because... Why not? He has killed billions of demons. And during one of Imperius's invasions of Hell, he apparently killed so many demons with Solarion that rivers of blood flowed through the burning hells. Honestly though, that kind of sounds like propaganda to me. Now Imperius lived in the Halls of Valor in the Silver City, where he trained angels in combat. The halls were filled with trophies and depictions of his conquests. Now when the Angerus Council found humanity and voted on its fate, Imperius pushed to have humanity destroyed due to its demonic heritage. With Malfiel choosing to abstain from the vote, there would only be four people left to vote. And in the case of a tie, the angels would go through with their original plan, which was to exterminate humanity. So Imperius was pretty confident that he would win the vote, needing only one other person to side with him. Next, let's talk about Ethereal, the Archangel of Fate. Ethereal is the genderless lore keeper of the Anchorus Council. Ethereal resides in the Library of Fate, in the Silver City, a location we visit in Diablo 3. In the library, you can find a bunch of crystals, which are pieces of the Crystal Arch. And if you look into these crystals, you can see visions of the future. Angels peer into these crystals, record their visions, and give them to Ethereal to interpret. So, you know, Ethereal is basically a subcontractor. Now, Ethereal wields Talisar, the Scroll of Fate. In times of great need, Ethereal consults this scroll. And Talisar apparently contains within it the outcome of the eternal conflict. As in whether angels or demons ultimately win. But Ethereal has never revealed the answer to anyone. You know, no spoilers. I will spoil it for you folks, though. Hell wins. Sorry. I guess you don't need to play Diablo 4 now. Here's the thing, though. One thing the scroll does not contain is the fate of humanity. Ethereal is able to know everything about the future of angels and demons, but nothing about humanity, because humanity was not part of the natural order when the universe was created. Further, any fate of angel or demon that is somehow altered by a human is something else that could mess with Ethereal's future forecasting. So, unspoilered. All we know is that if humanity had never existed, then hell would have won. Now, when the Angerus Council discovered humanity, Ethereal voted to spare humanity. Perhaps because of the realization that humanity was a wild card that could save the High Heavens from their ultimate fate. So, current vote count, one vote to kill all humans, one vote to save them, and one party pooper. Ugh. Onto Oriel, the Archangel of Hope. She is the most beloved of all angels, and she resides within the Gardens of Hope, another area we visit in Diablo 3. It's a place of meditation, and it's said that the Gardens of Hope don't contain any actual trees, so it's a bit of false advertising. But the area shimmers with light, and the sounds of a harmonious choir could always be heard in the background. Her weapon is Al Maesh, the Cord of Hope, kind of like Wonder Woman and her Lasso of Truth. If used on allies, the Cord of Hope can buff them, but if used on enemies, it could be like a whip, burning, blinding, and binding them. When the Council voted on the fate of humanity, Oriel put aside her typical role of mediator and spoke up with the most passion, drawing from her compassion. She believed that Inarius's crimes, you know, stealing the world stone, defecting, all that, should not be passed on to humanity. The sins of the father, the sins of the son, yada yada. She believed humans had a right to life, and she believed in the goodness in the hearts of men. And, and women too. She was disappointed when Malfiel abstained from voting. And she was already not happy with Imperius over what happened with him killing Diablo. So she looked to Tyriel, who would have the deciding vote. On to Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice. Like Imperius, he too was a legend on the battlefield. Tyriel and Imperius were brothers in battle, saving each other's lives on the battlefield countless times. Tyriel wields Eldruin, the Sword of Justice. Well, the battery died. The mighty Eldruin is said to be able to cut through any substance in existence. But it's believed that it cannot harm a being of righteous intent. And only those with a righteous heart 
can wield the blade, and it will not aid its user if ever wielded in anger. Tyriel's domain in the Silver City is the Courts of Justice, a place where angels come to air their grievances and regain equilibrium. Inaria served under Tyriel, and before he went rogue and stole the World Stone, he tried to get Tyriel to see the futility of the eternal conflict. But because he failed to use the word Justice. Somewhere in his speech, he failed to get Tyriel's attention. Now, when Tyriel finally discovered Sanctuary and Humanity, he saw humans as abominations that must be destroyed before the Burning Hells can use them as a weapon against the High Heavens. And before the armies of Heaven came down upon Sanctuary, Tyriel visited Sanctuary himself. He tricked some of the Ederim into believing he was on their side. And he tried to get them to kill Aldisian. But when they were able to resist his manipulation, Tyriel got a glimpse of how powerful humanity can become. And he was even more resolved to eliminate it as a threat. But then, when the forces of Heaven and Hell were clashing on Sanctuary, and Aldisian defeated Inarius, something happened that would change Tyriel's mind. Aldisian sacrificed himself to save humanity. Nothing truly evil could ever commit such a selfless act. And so Tyriel's heart was swayed. So when the Anjuris Council was passing the vote, and Tyriel was left to cast the deciding vote, Imperius was certain that Tyriel, his buddy, his brother-in-arms, who had previously been so in favor of eradicating humanity, would have his back. But Tyriel voted to spare humanity, leaving Imperius with no one to support him, an act that would perhaps forever damage the relationship between these two angels. Would this dissension further tear the Anjuris Council apart? Did the Lords of Hell get along any better than the Anjuris Council? Would Heaven or Hell try to sway humanity to its side? All these questions and more will be answered as we continue to explore this Diablo lore series. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch and Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, feel free to pledge on Patreon where your support is immensely appreciated and we have a number of backer rewards. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.